Good evening to all the attendees. Thank you so much to all the 12th grade students, parents and high school guidance counselors for joining us this evening. We know it's very late in the evening, so we truly appreciate your kind time and support in joining us. And as you've seen in our outreach email campaign that went out to your schools, we have Ms. Haiti Sin, who's the Director of International Admissions from Embry Doodle uh, Aeronautical University, Prescott, Arizona, who will be presenting you on the session topic, Careers in STEM, Aviation, Aerospace and Beyond. As you may have seen in our outreach campaign, you may kindly post your questions in the Q&A box uh, so that it can be viewable to Ms. Haiti. And she'd be having the pleasure to answer all your questions towards the end of the session once she's done with her presentation. Please be also on the lookout for some polls that will be taking place during the day. And of course, without further ado, I'm going to hand over the stage and the microphone to Ms. Heidi Sin. Ms. Heidi, thank you so much for joining us. We know it's early in the morning. We truly appreciate your kind time. I wish you the best for this presentation. Thank you. Thank you so much, Canal. And I'm so excited to be here to be talking with all of you and Kunal and I have traveled all over India together. Unfortunately, this year with the pandemic, I won't be able to get there in person, but hopefully I'll be able to come back to your great country really, really soon. Hopefully next year. I love the country and I love the food. So good morning from Arizona, everybody. Good evening to you. And my name is Heidi Sin, as Kunal has mentioned. I am the Director of International Admissions at Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University. And today I would like to share a little bit information with you about our university, as long as career in STEM fields, so science, technology, engineering, and math, and especially in the aviation field, aerospace, and beyond. So to start, I'm going to give you a little bit about Embry-Riddle history and how we all got started, a little bit about how we got into the aviation and aerospace industry. So back all the way in 1925, we actually started out as an aircraft producer. We worked very closely as what we call now the American Airlines and also as well as a flight school. And in 1965, we first opening up in Daytona Beach. And from what we were in closer to Miami, we actually took 31 truck and took all of the equipment and all of the students and faculty. And we drove up a little bit up north to Daytona Beach with all of the equipment back in 1965. And then in 1968, that's when our university status has been accredited and awarded and we became a university officially in 1968 and 1970 we actually started our worldwide campus which is uh it was in alabama fort brecker and that has turned into a global campus now with over 150 locations all around the world so we'll talk a little bit more about that worldwide campus and giving a student a lot of flexibility in the way of learning and in 1978, Arizona, um, where I'm at right now, has started, and we are the school that has one of the only College of Security and Intelligence program. And today, along with all of the campuses all around the world and all around the U.S., we enroll over 34,000 students each year, and we offer more than 100 associate, bachelor, master, and doctorate program in the STEM, aviation, and aerospace field, which we'll go through a little bit about that and how those degrees can help you with your future career path. So a little bit about our rankings and recognition. When you're deciding on a major, some of you here might already know, I definitely want to be a pilot. I definitely want to become an aerospace engineer. Some of you might be thinking about, oh, I really enjoy math. I really enjoy science, but I don't really know exactly which field or which major I want to go into yet. So some of the things to think about in the back of your mind, not saying that this is the most important thing, but this is definitely something to think about would be the ranking and the recognition of a particular major that you might be thinking about. So with that, we are the largest aviation and aerospace university in the world. And we also have number one rank undergraduate aerospace program in the U.S. At the Arizona campus, we have been named that for the past 18 years in a school without a doctorate category. And 
also number one and number four highest degree in the, some of the engineering field as well. We also have ranked the top 20 in majority of our engineering study as well. So one of the things about Embarado is so great is even though our aerospace is ranked number one, one of the most popular major on campus, but at the same time, all of our engineering major are very strong. And the cool thing about all of those major is you really work together as a whole as a student inside the School of Engineering. So when you are let's say aerospace engineering major, you'll still be learning about mechanical, you'll still be learning about electrical and so on. And vice versa, when you're a mechanical engineering and you say, oh, I actually have some interest in aerospace, you can also be involved in some of those projects or research or grant in that particular major as well. So it's very interchangeable in a sense, but at the same time, giving you a lot of option, a lot more broad experience, if you would like to do it that way as well. Um, and in addition to that, we are also one of the most innovative schools, especially in this climate. It's really important for us to really have the students to be creative, to be innovative, to really think about not only what is happening now, but what this world is going to look like in five years, in 10 years, and how our study and our student and our research can be helping this world moving forward in a sense. Um, our online campus, we'll talk a little bit more about that as well. It's also ranked number one right now based on the U.S. News and Report for one of the best online bachelor program as well. And Again, thinking about long term, so you're thinking about, oh, I'm going to be getting a degree from a U.S. university as a bachelor's student or someone maybe pursuing master, even a Ph.D. program. That is only part of your story, right? We also want to be thinking long term what your life or what your career will look like after you graduate and how and what you would want to do with your degree. So as Embarado, we're among the best in the industry, especially in the aviation, STEM, and aerospace field. So one of the things is the school name is important in the sense that you will be recognized when you go in for the job interview. Over 97% of our students who have graduated from Riddle work in the chosen field, which is really, really important because sometimes um, myself, I went to a really big public school for my undergraduate program, and some of my friends might graduate with a English degree and a communication degree or maybe something more general, and now they're working in a field that is so far difference than what the degree they have chosen from. But for Amber Riddle, from day one when you came in at the campus, what we do is really want to make sure that the degree that you get is going to have direct correlation with what you'll be doing in the future career. So that is really important because not only you'll find a lot more fulfillment from that, but also you'll be able to gain experience experience of four years that you're at Amber Riddle and using those experience towards your career. And that's not only at Amber Riddle, it's just really all across the board. When you are thinking about pursuing your university degree, you really want a school that focus on not only your study, but also someone that would think about your future after you graduate. And with over 130 alumni from all around the world, I was in Korea last year and we went to Korean airline and at the hangar, we were looking around and I just randomly said something about Embrito and everybody turned around and said, we graduated there and that was over half of the staff there. So it's really important to have that pride and have that recognition of the school that you are going to go because after, you graduated from there, you really associate with that university and the people that are going to be associated with the same university instantly, no matter where you go, especially in the aviation field, you have that common bond. And that's something that we're very proud of as Embarado grad. Um, with students from all over the world, right now we have students representing over 125 nations from across the globe. We're very, very focused on our diversity and really recruiting students from all across the world. It's very important for us to have that part. 
um, seven of our riddle graduates have went on and become astronauts. So that's something very exciting uh, for us. And every time you come to the U.S. and you fly on one of the major U.S. airlines, you'll find yourself one out of the four pilots that are currently flying for those airlines are our graduates. So again, is very well represented and that's only pilots and on top of that we have the maintenance staff we have the engineers we have the cyber security specialists in the back end a lot of them are well represented from member riddle So a little bit about our location. When you're thinking about choosing a college, yes, major is really important. That's why I'm doing the today's topic on the STEM and aviation and aerospace. But another thing to really think about is location, where you would be happy for the next four years. So we have two residential campus. When I say residential campus, it means that it's a full service campus. You see dorms, you see a lot of buildings with different colleges, you see a lot of clubs, organization activities will be available for you on campus and you can live in campus. So that's one of the things is different than a worldwide university part of it. So our two residential campus in America are in Florida, which is home to NASCAR, Daytona 500. They are a few minutes away from the beach. They have about um, 6,000 undergraduate and 600 graduate students. And we also have our Arizona campus, Prescott, Arizona, where I'm located. So sometimes when you're thinking about Arizona, you think about, oh my goodness, it's really hot. Yes, Arizona is really hot, but in Prescott, we actually are at 4,000 feet above sea level. So Phoenix is at sea level. We are in this mountain town. It's about an hour and a half away from Phoenix, about 4,000 feet, again, above sea level. So what you'll get here is four season. Right now, I don't even have my air conditioning on, and it's middle of July. It's beautiful, and it's sometimes a little bit windy, but it's really nice. It's super green outside. We do get a little bit of snow in the winter time, so I always make sure that student knows that so they don't look at me and say, whoa, what is this coming down from the sky when they come here? But with plenty of sunshine, we are also very, very suitable for high altitude flying. So if any of you are interested in our aeronautical science program in training to become a pilot, high altitude flying is really important in as part of your training and your experience. So obviously, as you can tell, the two locations we pick out in the U.S. are strategically uh, because it's, we want to maximize the sunshine that we'll get throughout the year. So for our student training to become a pilot, we'll maximize the time that they can be flying up in the sky. And also another beautiful sunny place, we also, as part of our worldwide campus, we have a Singapore branch as well. So a little bit closer to you guys if you are thinking, oh, I'm not ready to move all the way out to the U.S. Singapore campus is a great option for a lot of our students from the Southeast Asia region. They offer bachelor, master, PhD programs, including um, business analytics, um, aviation business management, a bunch of engineering programs, and also aeronautics program as well. So you have the option to start in Singapore and get your degree in four years from that campus and or you also have the option to start in Singapore and finish at one of the two residential campus in the US as well. So that gives you some additional flexibility to get experience in Singapore, in Asia, as well as coming to the US and get that experience as well. So very flexible in that sense. And our colleagues in Singapore is great. So if you're interested in that, let me know and I can definitely get you connected with that. And last but not least, we also have the worldwide and online campus, which enroll over 20,000 students globally. And especially in this climate, this has came in so important for all of us. So for fall 2020, for the students who are not able to physically be in the U.S., we have this beautiful platform set up. It has been around for a very long time 
very well recognized platform, and students can be able to jump on and take classes from anywhere in the world. And a lot of them are deciding to come in 2021 after taking online classes in 2020 because of the global pandemic. So our virtual classroom, we actually combine not only the video conferencing and learning system, but we also have a lot of the benefits to synchronize the learning. So you'll be engaging with your fellow students. You'll be engaging with your professor instead of just sitting inside your home and just looking at a lecture. So it's really important for us to be engaging with our students. Our technology also includes a virtual classroom and also virtual labs that students can get some of the hands-on experience from the comfort of the home. And you're like, oh, I've been stuck at home since March. Me too. Um, you want some social interaction. And through our e-union, it's actually a virtual community where our students, faculty, and staff can engage virtually from anywhere in the world. They can stay connected or even create groups and do projects just like they would on a traditional campus. So that engagement has been very, very important for us. And we're very grateful that we have this great platform already set up um, for students. And also working professionals, if you are someone who has been working as a professional for a number of years, you might not be able to come to the US physically, but you still are interested in the aviation and aerospace industry and you want to get an additional degree to help you boost your career, this is a really, really great opportunity for a lot of those professionals as well. So without further ado, I'll just jump right into a overview of what we're thinking about in the STEM aviation degree, what type of career path this type of degree can take you and what within those degree, what do we offer not only at Embry-Riddle but in a lot of other major university in America. So when you're thinking about a degree that really opening up the highest paying job around the world, a lot of people would think about, oh yeah, STEM, definitely, that would be the Feel that you're thinking about. And, but before we think about that, really think about what truly interests you, what you're good at, what you're passionate about, what do you like to do for fun? And turning something that you love into a major and also turning into that into a career path is what we do at Embarito and something that we really is our focus for our student. We don't want you to go into a major. I'm never going to be an engineer. I am just not very good in science. So that might not be the chosen path for me, but it might be for you. So really think about what is something that you're truly excited about. I like to talk, so this is perfect for me. Um, so definitely thinking about when you think about finding a major, think about what you want to do with it after you might have a vision of, oh yeah, maybe in the science field. Keep that in mind as we're moving on with the rest of this presentation. If something pops up to you and your head is thinking, oh, that sounds really interesting, think a little bit deeper into it before you finalize that might be your path of career choice. And again, with over 100 degrees program, we're talking about aviation, business, engineering, space, applied science. Um, hopefully, you will be able to figure out a career path that will interest you through this presentation. So first and foremost, aviation. Um, aeronautics is in the name of our university, is what we are most famous for. And Boeing is forecasting over 790 new jobs around the world by 2037. And with that increase, we're also anticipating a need of 754,000 maintenance technicians. So even with this pandemic that are really maybe slowing a lot of the air travel down, it's coming back pretty rapidly already in the US. I'm seeing a lot more activities happening around the world as well. But even with that slowdown, what the need we're seeing, even though the passenger might not be flying as much, even in this crazy once in a lifetime global pandemic, we're seeing the need of flea pilots. So think about people that are flying FedEx, which we have a bunch of students graduated from Riddle flying for them, flying for UPS or Amazon that are helping to deliver those essential products to people from all around the world. That need is not going anywhere. 
there. So if you are interested in flying, this is definitely a great job to go into in terms of job security moving forward. And for this is one of our most popular major. If you are interested in that, we do hit capacity almost every year. So my recommendation for you would be definitely study hard. We want to see a good GPA um, and apply early, which we'll talk about the application procedure at the end of this presentation. Um, we have over 90 instructional aircraft with uh, combined in our Daytona and Prescott campuses. So essentially, you will be able to get all of your flying time along with the four ratings. So your PPL, Piper Pilot License, Single Engine, Multi Engine, up to the Commercial Pilot Engine, and also your Bachelor Degree at Ember Riddle in four years. So in four years, you'll get all of those done and you can often fly for any major airline of choice at that point. We also have a helicopters program for students that might be interested in that as well. And our Prescott flight team has won over 12 national titles. So uh, people do know we do produce the highest quality of pilots. When you go into a job interview and you say, I graduated from Brito, people would know the type of training you have undergo at our university already and the type of pilots you will be just by graduating from Amber Riddle. So aviation and business, so with all of these great pilots, we also need students to train in becoming professional to connect with the management team. And we have accreditation from the ABBI, ACBSB, so all the big business school accreditation at the School of Business as well. So what you will get is a really strong foundation in business and management principle with in-depth study of aviation specifics internship opportunity within general aviation, major aerospace company, and government agency offer, helping students to get really hands-on experience and real-world industry insights. In addition, the opportunity to network is really important for us. We'll provide them the chance to foster professional relationships with industry leaders. So that's something that's really important for our students to do. Make sure that the screen is here. Beautiful. And our aviation business in, um, administration graduate are super in high demand right now for career going into the aviation industry, flight coordinator, IT consultant, and project manager. And we are not just an aviation department within a university. We are the aviation school. So that become very important for our students just because everyone surrounding you would be very passionate about aviation and aerospace. So those are the overview of that. And here is basically a list of all of the majors that we offer at the Aviation, College of Aviation and College of Business. If you want to just take a look at it here, a um, couple interesting major as well that is very unique, the Embarito, including the UAS, the AMEN vehicle system. So Basically, what you do is building drones, designing drones. So you're thinking about airplane, airline that we're very, very well known in, but we also have literally a drone major. What you would do, is you learn from the faculty who share the first-hand knowledge in aviation, and they are the people at the forefront of this really fast, rapidly growing industry in a manned aircraft. So a manned aircraft, what do you do with that? You help military, you help with firefighting, you help with disaster relief, you help with law enforcement. When a big airplane cannot get to a very remote spot, you put a drone in there. So the student from that particular major can even earn an FAA remote pilot in command, the RPIC certificate. So you become an officially certificates of um, drone pilots. And the FAA predicts that the fleet of commercial small UAS in the U.S. will approach 550,000 this year. So again, this is a future of the aviation field, not only becoming a pilot flying around an aircraft, but also someone that can take a drone pilot without a person flying into any area. So that's another really innovative major that we offer here at Amberito. 
And aviation maintenance is another uh, major that a lot of students are interested in. So here's all of the majors. If you have any question about that, we have the Q&A section in the end. I see some of you have been posting questions in there already. So don't worry, I'll get back and make sure I answer all of your questions um, at the end of this presentation. Moving forward, so engineering and space, another very popular and well-known major here at Riddle. So undergraduate students at Amber Riddle are introduced to the foundation of engineering from the very first semester. What does that mean? As some of the bigger university, when you enter the engineering program, the first year you might just be taking your physics 101 class, your very basic science courses, but at Embarito, the first year, the first semester you come in, you start in your engineering foundation. So for the ones that are maybe coming out from high school and you're just so excited to start getting into the major of your choice instead of taking general education classes, Embarito is a great choice for you. Um, just because of our size, it's a little bit smaller and we also have a lot of help with grants. Fortunately, we search grant project grants that we are very fortunate. A lot of the industry leaders such as Boeing, such as now SpaceX, such as NASA, they give us a lot of grants. So grant is just money, basically scholarship for our students to participate in research and projects right from the beginning of the program. And like some of the bigger university, you might not have the opportunity to do a research project until you graduate from your undergraduate program and move on to a master's student. So at Embarito, you get that hands-on experience as a undergraduate student. And that's why, as I was talking about earlier, how we are able to make sure that students are getting the experience Experience as an undergraduate student, hence translate into a career that tie closely with the field that they choose to go into. So that's very important for us as well. And we also have option if you're just for sure knowing engineering is your passion. We have an accelerated bachelor to master program where you can get a degree in master of engineering of your choice in five years. It is very rigorous. Um, I do also want to say if you are thinking about any form of engineering program, aerospace, mechanical, so on and so forth, we do expect you to come in with a very strong science and math background. So for IB, you might want to be in high level math, high level physics. If you are doing um, A level, we do want to see very strong, especially in physics, it's very important. The highest level of physics is going to help you not only survive the program, but also help you hit the ground running because you want to be a very strong candidate going into it so you can start participating in those research projects, in those grants from the very beginning. So physics, math is going to be very important. Here are our list of the major. As you can see, we cover most basically any discipline in engineering field from bachelor, master, all the way up to PhD. The beautiful thing about having a very strong school of engineering and space is the um, opportunity that student will get at the interdisciplinary learning, which means it's really flexible in learning and open up many doors or opportunity, like I was saying earlier, on what you're really interested in. So as an aerospace engineering, you might learn other discipline of engineering. So as you come in, you might not sure, oh, I'm not entirely sure which discipline I want to go into yet. So we can start on one, you work very closely with your professors, you work very closely with your advisor, and from that kind of trial and error, taking classes, doing internship, to really help you figure out what field that you are going to be the best in and help you to achieve whatever your career that you're thinking about for your future. And what we do is not only learning from books, so studying for exams, and we really focus on the hands-on learning for that really interactive learning between the discipline or even between the school. So the School of Engineering students might be working with people from the School of Aviation in helping the pilots in building a better aircraft, in building a better drone system for the drones. Because engineering, when you think about it, is not just studying in books. We really want our students to have that experience in doing 
by learning and learning by doing, vice versa. And with the COVID shutdown, this is actually a very good example. We closed our campus on in-person learning back in March. So our students have all been learning from home, but they're not stopping with the hands-on learning. Um, between the two campuses, Arizona and Florida, between all the students in different majors, they actually use technology to help our local community. At the beginning of the shutdown, we're really running low with the um, PPE, the personal protection equipment. So all the students came together just organically, and they started fabricating high quality masks and face shield using our 3D printing technology, which still blows my mind they were able to do that just from the comfort of the home. Over 50 of our engineering students were fabricating over 5,000 face shield and from distribution to local hospital um, while all self-distancing from one another. So that was really impressive for us. They get help from the professors on the clock. Um, also, our IT professional here at the campus and also local business chip in to help. And that's one of the example of how even when the world was changing so quickly around us, we were able to use the knowledge that we learned along with all the resources that continue coming in to move forward. We're not um, really getting restricted, even though things might be changing so much right now. So that's something that we're really proud of. And I know this is not going to stop here and we'll continue to be doing that. And another jumping into another very, very important college. Um, one of actually the first thing the US is the safety, security and intelligence uh, program here at the Arizona campus. It's only available at the Arizona campus. So it's under the Department of Safety and Intelligence. We are the first comprehensive degree granting college of its kind in the US. So you think about Speaking of all this technology and all this remote learning, all this collaboration happening right now, you need people to be protecting us. You might heard about the data bridge from Marriott, from bank, there are hackers that hacking the program even Zoom at the beginning of the lockdown. There were some hackers that were able to break into Zoom. We must protect ourselves. We need to protect operations and government who are interested in having people to help with protecting against cyber threats and even along with natural disasters, occupational illness and injury and all of this criminal act, we need people on the back end protecting us. Again, this is one of the fastest growing industry. As you can think about who does not need protection from the back end from cybersecurity threats, every single industry, every single country in the world would need that type of protection. And this is, again, one of the fastest growing industry we all recognize by, I'm going to jump right in there, recognize as one of the um, security and intelligence, excellent in security and intelligence program. I'm trying to move this screen up here from the NSA. So what that means is um, a lot of our students do get recruited by the three letter agency, including NSA, FBI, CIA, so on and so forth. Even though as an international student, you cannot work for the national agency or the federal agency, excuse me, but you'll be learning alongside with the best of the best of the industry. So for example, uh, Professor Avery, he has over 30 years working for the CIA. He was training analyst for the CIA, and he was also at the White House as the Director of National Security Council. Um, uh, Professor Krishna was the top cybersecurity executive for Boeing. So you'll be learning alongside with the best of the best of the industry and international students are allowed to be in the program. And um, some of my international students would choose to stay in the US working for a big tech company like Amazon with a bench um, of Amazon here in Phoenix, or they move to California, work at a Silicon Valley, or I have a student working at the embassy in DC helping the country get protect against cyber threats. So again, very, very well grow, uh, fast growing industry. If you have any interest, I would say in computer science, in programming, in any software development, this is a great major to go into. 
And again, along with that, if you're just more interested in the traditional computer science engineering, we have that at the School of Engineering as well. This is more of a fast growing, more on the back end of protection uh, major. So here's all the list of the major that are offered and uh, within the cyber intelligence and security program and also our safety program. If you are interested in our safety science, that's another great major going into that's more on the physical level of protecting a physical things. So things that you can see um, that would be our safety major. All right, jumping into applied science. So for anyone who are an analytical thinker, a problem solver, we also offer applied research degree program for someone who would like to be challenged. And they are deeply rooted in research, just like all of our other major. Um, some of the area would be focusing aviation and aerospace, and others would be focusing on the fundamentals that can be applied to any industry. So here's a list of our applied science program. You can earn your bachelor degree in any research field that is best suitable for you. There is a accelerator program where you can earn your BS in human factor psychology if you're interested in psychology and um, master of human factor in five years as well. And if you're interested in studying the weather, we have a program for that. Or if you're interested in math, we have the um, application math uh, program as well, and also an animal science program if you like to work with animals. So again, after I went through all of the majors and all the college that is available at Ember Riddle in the aviation, STEM, and aerospace fields, it's important for us to think about, so what now? When I get a major from Ember Riddle, what happens now? So over 97%, as I was mentioning at the beginning of the presentation, of our students do get a job within the field after they graduate or have move on. If they say, oh, I want more study, I don't have enough of education yet, they move on to graduate school within a year of graduation. And that's a number that we are very proud of, of our students. And here are a list of the majors Oh, sorry, um, employers that came in and employ our students. There's just a few of the examples here. And I'm not going to spend too much time on this, but I do want to talk about how we help you prepare for success. So along with the research, along with the experience, the hands-on experience that you get from inside the classroom, we also help students to start exploring the employer's field when they're at Ember Riddle. So we started out a lot of students who work on campus. As an international student, you can work 20 hours on campus per week. So the cool thing about being in an aviation or STEM-focused school is a lot of job on campus is directly related to your major. So you can work at a lab, help your professors with some very technical tasks. You can work at an IT support support specialist, you can, if you are an AS major training to become a pilot, you can work over at the flight line, so on and so forth. So those are the things that directly related to your major. And then from that point onward, we have a great ISSF International Student and Scholar Service Center here on campus. So the job is to help you to help well, to find in internships or well, the career center help you get that. Once you get the internship, the ISS is help you to get the paperwork to do the internship legally. So there's two ways. CPT is the internship that you do while you're getting your degree. OPT is the internship um, internship that you do after you graduated from Embarado with a degree. So both of them, you need to be directly correlated with your major. And the cool thing about CPT, a lot of my students does it. One of my students from India, um, she's an aerospace engineering major, and she just finished her CPT at Delta Airlines in Atlanta last summer as an engineering, um, aerospace engineering analyst. Uh, for her internship. The cool thing about CPT is not only you get a job, you get paid, you also earn college credit, you earn experience with the help and support that you get in-house from our, our advisor here at Amber Riddle while you're still going to school. And the OPT is great, that is usually after you graduated, well, that is 100% after you graduated from Amber Riddle with a degree. And with a OPT, 
all of the students are guaranteed to be able to do that for one year as long as you find a employer that will hire you and the job is within completely aligned with your major or within the room alongside with your major. The cool thing about Amber Riddle is I would say 95% of the degree that we offer will fall under the STEM field. So with a STEM OPT, you can actually ask and apply for an extension that gives you additional 24 months. So for any student graduated with a STEM major, you will be able to do a OPT for three years in your United States. And after that, that would be your choice to go back to your home country or continue working in the U.S. So those are some of the things that we are really helping students. We think ahead. We don't just think about, oh, we just give you a degree or a diploma, then off you go. We really help students and helping them to think ahead of how this is going to help them to be successful in the future. And that's something really important for us. All right. And then I'm just going to jump straight into now everything sounds good. I'm ready to apply. Um, to the application process when you are thinking about building a competitive application. Like I was mentioning earlier, our aerospace engineering is number one in the country right now. Our aeronautical science program is one of the most popular major on campus and they do hit capacity. So how do you need to do as a student at this stage of your life to make sure that your application will be the most competitive. So on the essay, on the application, before you even start that right now, you should be thinking about why you at this particular school, let it be Ember Riddle, let it be Harvard, let it be MIT, whichever school that you're thinking about. What's the match? How you and the school match together, right? Alongside that, why that particular major? Alongside that, it's all about the fit. We want to see this three things, you and the school and the major. How does these three things really fit together? In the U.S., we talk a lot about the fit. We don't want you to be here if you are unhappy. We want you to find a good fit. We want you to be here and say, yes, this is the place for me. Yes, this is the major for me. Not because I told you to come here and become a pilot. It's because this is something that is you are passionate about. So we want to see that translate in the application of why you, why this school, why this major. And alongside that, here's a list, a very long list of admissions requirement. Again, if you have any additional questions, contact us directly. Um, if you're interested in the Arizona campus, contact me or my colleague, Michelle. If you're interested in the um, Daytona Beach, Florida campus, I'll have the contact information at the end for you to contact them as well. But here is, we're one university, we just happen to have multiple campuses. So if you do have questions about Florida and you want to talk to me about it, completely fine as well. Um, but here is the list of the application materials that you'll need to be sent in. So when you come in, um, you can actually, if you decided to apply tomorrow, you can use the fee waiver code, write this down, PCNS. And for school counselor, if you want to pass this on to your student, please feel free to do so. With this, it will save you $50 to apply, and you just need to submit the application without having to pay the application fees. Um, Secondly, it's the personal statement that we just talked about, that triangle, why you, why school, why major, that will be part of the personal statement, um, and also high school transcript. We do need to see that, send that in. If you are a transfer student or if you are someone who has um, attended a college in India or anywhere in the world, we'll need the foreign credit evaluation as well. TOEFL IELTS, here's the minimum score, 79 or 6.0. Or if you have or are attending an international school, I know there are a lot of great international schools in India, um, that the primary language of teaching of instruction is English. If you have attended that for at least two years, you do not need to submit your TOEFL and IELTS. You just need to send in your transcript and I'll see that if it's an IB curriculum, if it's an A-level curriculum and all the classes are taught in English, you do not need to submit your TOEFL. 
um, ACT, SAT score is optional for admissions, but it is required for scholarship. We do give out merit-based scholarship for international students, just like we give it out to the domestic student based on your GPA and your ACT or your SAT. So if you take that, go ahead and send that in. You don't need to do anything else. In addition, if you qualify for it, you get a scholarship right away after you get accepted from us. And that's about it. And really quick on tuition here, and this is all inclusive for the residential campuses. As you can see, it's roughly a little bit over $50,000 a year uh, for any of the majors. And But if you are thinking about flight training, it is wise to add in another 20,000. So it'll be a little bit over $70,000 per year um, for the aeronautical science major. But for any other major, engineering, um, cybersecurity, so on and so forth, it's roughly around 51,000. And that would include your room and board, all you can eat on campus, living on campus, so on and so forth. All right, I'm running out of time. Scholarship, we talked about that already. So if you want to be considered for a scholarship, making sure that you send in a ACT or your SAT score and you'll be considered that automatically. And here is our contact info for the Arizona and Florida campus. If you contact him now, he will be able to give you my personal email as well. If you are interested at the Arizona campus, I'm happy to talk to you about your specific question in your specific situation as well. All right, I think I rushed through that so I can get to the Q&A. All right, so... Perfect. So someone is interested about the aerospace engineering major. Great choice. Great major. Again, it's ranked number one in America at the undergraduate level. And for you to make sure that you are the most competitive um, applicant, math. And if you are thinking about the highest level of math, I would say a high school level calculus will be very important. Do calculus and also physics. That will help you very, very much try to get to the highest level of that too. Aviation business management, general. So the question is the difference between aviation management and general business management. That's a very, very great question. So yes, ABA, and also we have a BA, business administration. So BA would be the, I have a major in business um, administration. So that's more just business as a whole. But versus ABA is you learn everything the same as the BA, but you get the additional little nuggets of the aviation side of it as well. So a lot of our students graduated from that would go on and work for an airline, become an executive, but it's interchangeable, the two, but it's just an additional aviation piece that will be adding on to the business management side. So it's a very popular major as well, the aviation business. Um, so due to COVID-19, will it be possible to transfer from first year Singapore campus and then directly join second year in the Arizona campus? Yes, and that's a great option. Depending on the major that you're thinking about, let's say if you're interested in the aviation business major, yes, it's pretty seamless transition for the two campuses. Um, if not, we just need to make sure the classes that you take at Singapore campus will align with the classes that you'll be taking at the Arizona campus. And yes, that is a great option for a lot of the students in this climate as well. OPT for aviation would be, so the question is, what would the OPT for aviation, would it be more than one year as it is a STEM major? How many flying hours and classroom hours will the degree offer? That's a great question. So the student is interested in the aeronautical science program in becoming a pilot. Yes, um, the AS degree do consider part of the STEM major. So you can work as um, a STEM student on an OPT for up to 36 months in the U.S. after you graduate is a really good opportunity. Um, some of the job would be become a flight instructor. We actually hire you at Embarito as a flight instructor. If you are an AS major and an international student, we are able to give you an H-1B. Um, as an aviation student, there's no quota on that at a university level. Reason government change does not affect H-1B for university students because that is a nonprofit organization. They cannot touch us. So what that would um, entail is if you are a good student pursuing an AS degree, you after you finish the program, you get roughly around 250 flight hours within the AS bachelor degree. And then 
if you want to get a restricted ATP, you need 1,000 hours to become a commercial pilot. So if you become an instructor at Ember Riddle, there's a couple benefits there. Number one, you get paid for flying other students, training other students around. Two, you get to build up your hours to the 1,000 hours so you can fly for the commercial airlines. And then three is you can use your OPT or your H-1B for that particular thing. But we can talk a little bit more because it's a little bit complicated. But yes, OPT does apply for aviation student and you can apply for the extended OPT for three years. All right. Um, oh, no, I just skip a few. Would there be a combination of bachelor and master degree if you want to stay back to continue your study? And how would admission work for this? Yes, we do have a combination we call it the accelerated program, depending on the major. So engineering, yes, we have the accelerated program or human factor will have that program where you can get your bachelor and master degree in five years. How can undergraduate student pursue teaching and research assistantship? So undergraduate student assistantship is more of a master program student thing. You can pursue that as, as a master student, but as an undergraduate student, you can definitely still pursue the research opportunity or research project. We just don't call it assistantship because assistantship is basically a job that master student can apply for. But research opportunity, research grants, which is more like research scholarship. As an undergraduate student, you work closely with your advisors and your professor here on campus. You can definitely pursue those. And usually, students do that after your first semester, after you're a little bit more comfortable on campus, then you can start applying for the uh, those research grants. Um, can you describe the SAT and your TOEFL requirements? So I just did. So your IB student, SAT is um, optional for admissions, but if you want a scholarship, I would say if you get anything above a 1300 SAT would qualify you for some of the scholarship. And for IB, the minimum score, combined score I want to see is at least a 30. So the higher the IB, higher the SAT, the higher the scholarship. The highest scholarship offer um, on the merit-based scholarship is $12,000 per year. So it goes from 4,000 all the way up to 12,000. So if you have a higher SAT score, higher IB or A-level, whatever, you will reach a little bit closer to the 12,000 per year. And then TOEFL requirement, if you are already in an IB school, you do not need your TOEFL. Which campus activities do you recommend to undertake to make the most of the experience? Oh my goodness, um, we have over 100 clubs on campus. It's really from something more academic that you can join a drum club, building drums. You can join a professional flight club to start flying and burrito to go to competitions or you can join a kickball team those are it's completely up to you but i would also always recommend to join one academic one that directly related to your career path in the future just so you build more connection network and also one is for fun just so you can relax a little bit but yeah it's completely up to you but that would be my recommendation can you share about your current international students and what major and minors are popular? Definitely um, aeronautical science and aerospace engineering are the two that are the most popular, but coming up is definitely the cyber intelligence and security program. I'm seeing a lot of international students with interest in coding or computer science going into that major as well. Could you share details for housing? And I would like to learn about meal plan for vegetarian students. Yes, we have a great meal plan and we have a great vegetarian option as well. Um, most of my international students um, have the option um, while well, they decide to choose to live on campus. If you are a first year freshman, so which means you graduated from high school from your home country, you come straight to the United States, you have to live on campus for the first year. We want to make sure that you're well fed. I want to make sure that you're well taken care of at least for the first year. And that first year of the meal plan will be included in that tuition that we talked about already. And the second, third, and fourth year, if you want to move off campus, you have the option to do that. But a lot of my international students, most of them do choose to live on campus for the entire four years. Vegetarian option is great here on campus with a big um, dining hall. And that will always be one vegetarian option and it changes every day. And I always take the option as well because it's healthier and it tastes better. 
I think. Um, yes, so the option is there for our students. And if you do choose to live off campus, generally the price will go down a little bit just because you don't have to buy a full meal plan. You can take care of your own food. You can find usually housing is a little bit cheaper off campus, but if you don't want to hustle, majority of my students do live on campus for the entire four years. For the Florida campus, you're required to live on campus for two years if you come in as a new student. I would love to double major, good for you. I'm unsure about option. I want or would like to know the impact of duration and cost of the degree. It depends on how hard you want to work. Um, double major is definitely um, possible. And depending on the major, to be honest, if you are coming in as an aerospace engineering major, it would be is because of the major is already so vigorous. If you want to add in a double major for on top of aerospace engineering, I would say you will have to work really, really, really hard. I don't know if I recommend that to be honest with you. But if you come in as an aeronautical science major training to become a pilot, a lot of them do double major in that and business. So you can get the best of the both world, have a business degree and also a pilot degree. And that's totally doable. You do that um, when you apply, you can talk to me a little bit about it but most of the things happen when you get accepted and we have your personal advisor who works one-on-one -on -one with our student to help them plan out the academic plan for the whole four years on your first year of study. So you know exactly what you are expecting um, when you first start here. So fee waiver code, um, it was on the past slide, so make sure you go back to that. It's P for Peter, C for Cat. N for Nancy and S for Sam, fee waiver code. So make sure you write that down. If you forget about it, just email me. I can give that to you again. We don't do common app. So the question is, will you be accepting common app for fall 2021? We have our own application on our website. So make sure that you go to erau.com and get the application from there. We do not accept common app. Campus safety. Campus precautions of being taken for student safety in the classroom, housing, meal plan given COVID-19. That is a great question. Thank you so much for asking that. And definitely something that I want to cover here. Campus safety, we're really safe. Uh, Prescott is this beautiful small town in Arizona that is a very college based community. Everybody know about us in the community. Um, we have a beautiful downtown. It's more like the Wild West that you see some of the old structure, but you also see lots of new buildings from Embarito to the community. A lot of fun things going on here is completely different. Um, I was born in Hong Kong and completely different than anything that you would see in Asia. Um, and it's really cool Western town, but at the same time, it's an hour away from Phoenix where I go down there to do my grocery shop shopping at the big Chinese Asian market, the big Indian market. I go there a lot because my one of my really good friends is Indian and she's teaching me how to make Indian food and we can get all the spice there. So you don't have to bring all the spice with you. Um, that's one of the things that my Indian student will bring off the spice um, in the suitcase. And I tell them, hey, there's a market down there. So you don't have to do that. Um, so it's very diverse, very safe. But at the same time, the benefits for close to a big city is that type of market. I like food. Um, so it's safe community. And for COVID-19, we are taking all of the safety precautions very seriously. All the students are required to wear a mask and we have a mandatory six feet apart social distancing um, regulation in place. And we're doing a lot of hybrid classes with the technology we have, thankfully, that we are able to incorporate a lot of the hybrid classes, which means that it's low density classes. So your classroom most likely will be half full, so you'll still see people, but instead of having 30 people inside a classroom, we might have 15 and they're all spacing out together. Um, along with that, we have the face shield to all of the offices, making sure that we are minimizing any risk that we can have. We also have testing on campus for anyone who wants it. And for international students coming in this fall, we're also incorporating a 14 days quarantine for the student free of charge. If you're already a student with a housing contract, they come in, stay on campus for free and just eat and maybe take some online classes and for the 14 days uh, for the quarantine period. And also the testing usually come back within 24 hours. If you're tested negative, um, you will be out of the quarantine uh, for the COVID-19. So we're taking them very seriously for 2020 and I feel like it would be a new normal moving forward as well um, into spring 2021 and forward because this is something that we are treating very seriously. 
Okay, and I'm here. So if you guys want to stay, I'm totally happy to stay. I know it's already um, has been an hour, but I will stay here until I finish answering all the questions. So please feel free to continue staying with me. I'll try to speed this up. What is the class faculty ratio in Arizona campus? What access to faculty would I have after class that is and for any academic support I might require? That is a great question. And that is one thing I love about Amaretto because of our class student to faculty ratio is about one to 16. So you get to know your professor really well. My husband is actually a master student in the cyber security program. That's why I know the program so well. Um, he knows all of his professor by name. He has chat or meeting with them, even a short meeting every other day. And just to ask questions, just to talk about his future career plan, and the students that are working with our professor have the same type of relationship. They are not only your professor, but also your mentor. And that's what I found really, really great about our campus, not only in Arizona, same as Florida, is the access to faculty and access to your advisor. They really have a lot of support for the student. And they're there because they love what they do, because they love the STEM and the aviation industry. And the cool thing about that is those professors are the people who are so influential in the industry. Um, one of our professors is sitting on the board of Boeing, so they know what is the industry going. That's why we have so many insights with that. We have professors working on the board for NASA. We have um, different board of directors in different type of the company right now in the industry as we speak. So that's why we are having um, the opportunity to send students to so many great um, career paths after they graduated from here. Thanks for that question. That's great. Minimum GPA requirement for missions and minimum for scholarship. I mentioned that a little bit. Um, 3.0 GPA, so a B average, would be minimum to be considered for scholarship, same for admissions. And so for IB, would be around 30, at least a 30 IB score and 80% um, for minimum. And obviously, if you're applying for an AS, aeronautical science, or aerospace engineering major, I do want to see a stronger score in math and science. So I do want to see an A in math and also physics. But if you might not have that all four years of your high school, it's not the end of the day. It's just what would help your application to become more competitive. As an entering class of 12th grade student, would admissions be impactful 2021 as many senior students this year are deferring to college starting 2021? That is a great question. Yes, I know that is a concern for some of the universities in the U.S., but I would say don't worry about that right now. Honestly, keep doing what you're doing. You are starting your last year of high school. Continue pushing your grade up. Um, apply early especially if you're coming in 12th grade, you can actually start your fall 2021 entry application right now. So if you want to get off the phone and stay up and start the application using the fee waiver code, you can start that right now. I am not looking at those applications yet because we're still finishing up the fall 2020 class, but you can actually submit your application right now because it is open online. And then usually later into the summer, that's when I read those applications. And one thing about the application is you can submit everything separately. So if you submit the application now and you submit your SAT score later and you submit your IB score a little bit later, that's completely fine. All I need is your IB score from up to the last junior year. So if you are entering your grade 12, you can submit what score that you have now as part of the application. And you just need to follow up with your grade 12 grade a little bit later. So you can start application now. What be the closest international airport for coming student? What is life in the city? I covered that a little bit. Um, so Prescott, we do have an airport coming in. It's not international, it's a regional airport. The best route for a lot of students is fly into LAX. And from LAX, you can fly straight to Prescott. Or for Arizona, you can also fly straight to Phoenix. And from Phoenix to Prescott, it's about an hour and a half, depends on how fast you drive or the shuttle service drive, you can take a shuttle service and get you directly onto campus. You can just check whichever airport has a cheaper flight. Usually I fly directly to Prescott from LAX. So either from um, India straight to LAX, that's a really long flight. Um, and then from LAX, you can go straight to Prescott. That's usually the route I take because I don't like to have too many layovers. 
Um, but yeah, life in a city is great. Like I said, Prescott is considered a little bit smaller town, so it's very safe. You're surrounded by this. I'm looking out my window now. We're in a forest of just so much green and very temp temperamental weather. So it's pretty mild all year long. Pretty dry. So bring a lot of lotion. Um, but yeah, it doesn't really have any big things going on in terms of weather. It's snow, I said a little bit. But yeah, it's really safe. And the cool thing is being close to a big major city like Phoenix gives you everything. You can go to an NBA game if you, well, when this pandemic is over, um, go to a game. You can go to a baseball game. You can go to a concert when this is over um, in a big city. But at the same time, you feel super safe. People don't lock their cars around here. You should lock your car, but uh, Sometimes I forget, and it's fine. Um, so it's very safe city. And for Daytona, it's a little bit different vibe. It's a beach town, so it's a little bit more humid. And um, the weather stays the same all year long. They don't really have the change in the weather. So for some people, it's kind of like India. They, some students tell me that, that you, it's just kind of hot and humid all year long. And so if you prefer that, that is a great option as well. And Daytona Beach also have their own regional airport, but Orlando is the major airport. So it's close to Disney. If you're super into Disney, that is a great um, city right next to about an hour away from our Daytona Beach campus as well. So that'll be a major airport for the, for the campus. All right, all right, uh, let's see. Thank you for all this great question, by the way. From an admissions and scholarship point of view, which item weighs more important? Transcript, essay, test score, English score, and letter of recommendation. That is a great question, Ravi. Um, I would say for admissions point of view, not only at Amberito, any university in the U.S. Um, would look at your transcript first. We want to make sure that you are going to survive on campus by evaluating your academic performance. So I would definitely say high school transcript, very important. Do well in your high school. If we understand if one year drop a little bit, we want to see what we call upward trend. You can pull yourself back up. You do really well your last year in high school. That helps with admissions. But at the same time, stay in touch with your admissions team, a la me, or Florida campus, all my colleagues. Um, we are willing to help you on a case-by-case -case basis. If you have any specific or individual thing that may have affected you in your lifetime that you want to share with us, we're here to help you. And that's one thing I always tell the student. We're not here to judge you. We want the best for you, so please bring up any question, especially if you have special consideration of your one year that you got really sick and you got a C in math. Like we need to know about that instead of just reading that on your transcript. But yeah, transcript um, is going to be the most important thing. But then the second thing I would definitely say essay. I, I personally pay a lot of attention to it, um, and then test score is going to be important for your scholarship consideration. What is the lowest grade be compensated by high, so low grade and high ACT score as I have performed poorly in math but want to pursue aviation business management? So just like what I was saying earlier, we do want to help you. So if you can kind of explain why your math grade was so bad in that particular year or what happened there, what I can do to help you to make sure that you'll be successful once you get here. Because I don't want to just accept you and get you here and say bye. I want to help you get here and want to make sure you're successful in four years at Embarito. And after you graduate, you get a really good job, right? So. Let me know what happened. So start the application. If you have a high ACT score, that definitely helps. So I know that you will be able to handle the course load here. But yeah, contact me directly, um, and I can work with you on that. All right, I think I breezed through all the questions. If you have any last minute questions, like I said, I'm happy to stay a little bit longer to answer a couple more questions. But if not, I am going to um, have now let you guys know my personal email. If you have any questions that you want to um, ask me personally or privately, please feel free to send it directly to me. And thank you for such an engaging um, section here, even though it's just me talking for over an hour. I see that you are here and you're engaging by the question that you're asking. I really appreciate your time. 
hopefully I'll get to see some of you next year in person, either in the U.S. or in India. But again, um, take care and please stay in touch. Hey, thank you so much for that, Haiti. Uh, really, really appreciate your kind time. Students, thank you so much for staying back for the session. I can see all of you are still present. I know it's very late in the night out here, approaching 9 p.m., but truly appreciate your uh, support and your kind time uh, for, uh, you know, for posting all of these wonderful questions. I'm going to wait for another five seconds before I close the poll. Uh, I'm sure you may have seen in your screen. Did you find this session useful? And in five, four, three, two, one, I'm going to close it. And of course, we will be kind enough to share the results with Ms. Haiti. Uh, Haiti, can you see it at your end? Yes, well, thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much, Haiti. So students, I want to make an important announcement. I will be sharing Ms. Haiti's email address with your guidance counselors, please. Uh, and uh, this session is also recorded. So it will be shared with your guidance counselors as well. So other students and parents, of course, who were not able to attend uh, this program today uh, will be able to view it. Uh, and of course, be in touch with Haiti because this email address and the recording session both will be shared with your schools. Having said that, thank you so much for your kind participation. We truly appreciate you joining us this evening. And please also join me in saying thanks to our esteemed and wonderful panelists who's a very good friend, uh, Ms. Heidi Singh. Uh, Heidi, thank you so much for your taking the kind time and joining us this morning. We know it's early in the morning out there, but truly appreciate your kind time and support and, and sharing all the wonderful information, not only about the session topic, but also about your institution. Thank you, Kunal. You're great as always. Thank you for your time, Chair. Thank you so much. Uh, with that, having said that, students, I'm just going to wait for a couple of uh, minutes. If you guys want to just take this uh, email address down, I'm just going to wait out uh, online for a quick minute. Uh, and having said that, it's a cap for the day. We look forward to keeping in touch with you. And Heidi, thank you once again. We look forward to keeping in touch with you. And I'm sure many of these conversations will continue well past after this session. So once again, we appreciate your kind time. Thank you. Have a good night. Okay, take care, Heidi. Bye. Take care. Bye. And Kudal, can you share the session, um, the recording with me too? Oh, yes, absolutely. I'll be sharing it uh, by tomorrow. It will. I'll be emailing you the uh, session uh, recording link with you as well. Absolutely right. Perfect. Thank Sounds you. Good. Thank you. Okay, thank you, students. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye for the day. Bye, everyone. everyone. Bye.